Welcome back. This show explores the idea that we could all have lived before in a past life, but who could we have been and what could we have experienced? So far, we've seen the regression of TV presenter and former glamour model Melinda Messenger. She told us a highly emotional story of a woman suffering from the loss of a child. How old was the baby when it died? Very little. Was it sick or not sick? It was sick. Could Melinda really have been experiencing a past life, or is there another explanation behind her traumatic tale? I think if you're looking at past life regression as a way of exploring emotions, and those emotions are too difficult to look at in a conscious way, then it can be, for some people, some benefit if they can look at it in a safe way. I think it becomes dangerous when people become very preoccupied with that past life. They believe in it, they see it as a fact. I don't believe that anybody goes back and re-experiences themselves an actual previous life that they have lived. They may make up the whole details of the life, it may be someone who never existed, it may be a fictional character they've read about, it may be an actual historical character who they, they think themselves as living the life of, but I don't believe that the, they are actually re-experiencing something which their soul, their spirit, has experienced in the past. Past life regression is a therapy and therefore it can heal a lot of ailments and mental issues. And often we have to go back to lives that will be dramatic and will be emotional because we have to find the source of the issues. And they will not be in the happy lives necessarily, they will be in the really traumatic and traumatising lives. But we cut the ties and allow closure on this and therefore we heal the issues in the present. In a moment, Melinda will be joining me to discuss her thoughts and feelings on that experience. But first, we reveal if any historical or factual conclusions can be drawn from the story. So what have we got in Melinda's regression? Well, frankly, not a lot. There's no place, no date. Just that shadowy figure in a darkened room. This could well be our toughest investigation yet. But for all that, there are one or two gems lurking in those shadows. How old do you sense yourself to be? 60. And what kind of clothes are you wearing? <laughs> Sack. Like a dirty old cloth. OK, so we've got an old woman in a tunic dress. Now, frankly, that could put her at almost any period in history. Are you aware of having any family? No. Is there anyone you love or care about? No. What can you see now? It's really, really dark. Really dark. She does sound poor and neglected, but what was she doing in that darkened room? Well, frankly, it's almost impossible to say. But what else was there? I can see a cross. Or a sword. In the shape that's like a cross, it's a sword. If at first Melinda mistook a sword for a cross, maybe it's because it's a sword pointing downwards. Could it be an ornamental sword hanging on a wall? Well, I don't think so, because Melinda then tells us something else. I can see a sword and a helmet. Somebody's wearing it. Don't know who they are. And are they male or female? Male. Now, we're getting somewhere. A man in armour, clearly some kind of soldier. And helmets, well, they've been around for over 5,000 years, like these ones from ancient Greece. So, it could have been one of these, but on the other hand, it could very well have been one of these, a 19th century cavalry helmet. Now, based on Melinda's evidence, we've narrowed it down to a staggering 5,000 years. Talk about a needle in a haystack. But there is one more thing. Sword and a helmet. <laughs> Like a what kind silver, of? long hat, helmet, with a tuft on the top. Now, that might not sound like much, but actually, I think it helps us quite a lot. We've got a long steel helmet, and that sword that's shaped like a cross. Now, it doesn't fit the picture of the ancient Greeks that we've seen, nor even a 19th century cavalryman. 
For my money, it's one of these, a 14th century medieval knight. And if I'm right, and if this is what Melinda saw, the question is, was he there to kill her, or was he there to save her? So, as you can see, you caused us no end of problems trying to track down who the woman might have been, why the knight was there. I have no idea um, about that period in history at all, but I don't know uh, if there was any kind of war on at that time or what the span of that war was or whether there was kind of the constant kind of um, sort of aggression going on. I really don't know. Is there anything that you feel that y you might have um, been projecting back to her if it wasn't a past life? I thought about it and thought about it and really soul-searched and really looked deep inside to think, OK, where is this element of me that this could have, I could have constructed this from? Um, and I genuinely cannot find it. And, and there was nowhere in my even imagination that, that I could have found this, this life. I think of all our um, regression stories, yours was the most emotional, the most traumatic and, and in a way the most painful for, for us to watch. So you're all right. Yes, I'm fine, but it's, it is, it's just so much to try and comprehend, to be honest with you. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting anything this kind of, I guess, deep and real. Mm. What is really uncanny for me, beyond belief actually, is the images that they're flashing up is exactly what I was seeing, which is quite spooky to say the least. <laughs> the, the moment where you, where you got very upset was, the, was that description of, of the baby. I mean, there was, there was something that we could see behind your eyes that you were not prepared to say out mm. loud. Do you have pictures of what you saw in, in, in your head or did you shut that out completely? I, I shut that out. I, I, felt, I felt myself going there and I felt myself experiencing that pain and that anguish and then just completely pulling out. Do you, do you wish you had gone? I do now, I do, because it's kind of left there hanging and thinking, well, what did that mean? But it was just, I think it was just so much to deal with physically. It was a very real feeling. If it wasn't real, if I could have watched it from a distance, then I think I could have gone there. But yeah. because I was really feeling those emotions, I, I kind of didn't want to go through it. It's just raised so many questions, and I'm really kind of gutted that I wasn't able to, to, to kind of dig up more information to kind of help put that picture together, because I would like to know now. Was there, was there a, a moment there where you thought, um, actually, I remember these feelings, I remember this, this sort of despair? When, when I was having the regression, that sense of... Um, yeah, of, of, of loss of this loss of this child was was just so excruciatingly painful, and that, that pain was a similar pain to the to the pain of the the postnatal depression after my children were born. An overwhelming sense of almost like bereavement, actually, which I couldn't understand because it's the complete paradox, isn't it? You've given birth, you know, a healthy child, and to feel a sense of bereavement was quite startling. What is strange, actually, is that. In this lifetime, I have a very strong um, protective um, need to, to protect children and a really strong desire. You know, it's a very um, kind of powerful response in me that I, I feel it's my responsibility to, to, you know, look after every child there is. And it did kind of make me think, well, is that somehow linked? What, what we did see um, was, was uh, Andrea ki kicking into the sort of restorative part of, uh, of, yes. of her therapy, begin to look after you and to, to make sure that you were comfortable and happy with, with what was happening. How did that feel? That was, I mean, that was quite a wonderful experience, actually. I, I do remember just feeling very kind of, you know, that sort of lifted, joyful, light feeling, but also when she was releasing the kind of the negative energy that I had a really powerful burning sensation on my feet and um, and yeah and then a kind of a lightness afterwards and just a kind of a happiness uh, you know a real kind of happiness well hang on there for just a second because you've heard what uh, what Melinda thinks it's up to you now to make up your own mind what do you believe here's what the experts have to say on it all <laughs>
the fact that Melinda found her regression so relaxing, so releasing, so cathartic, really doesn't surprise me at all. Crying is a very, very good way of getting rid of inner tensions, of built-up tensions. I would encourage everybody to cry. Uh, the fact she hasn't felt able to show her tears in public before does suggest to me it's a bit like a dam. It's built up a lot of head behind it, and the regression was a good excuse, a good reason for her to show this. She tells us that she's got a uh, very, very overprotective attitude towards children. She, she, she thinks, even by her own terms, she takes it too far. And yet in the past life, she had this nightmare scenario where she's actually lost a baby. Now, that's kind of the worst thing that any mother could, can, could think about. And yet she's there, and she's exploring that, and, and she's... Maybe not coming to terms with it, but she's at least finding out what it feels like. In Melinda's regression, you saw how, unfortunately, in that lifetime, she lost a child, and it was a very dramatic and emotional event for her. She probably died in that lifetime, carrying that negative memory of that, bringing it through into this lifetime, but not consciously knowing about it. But that's probably made her very caring and overprotective of children, especially her own children. So, when it comes down to it, there is, of course, that one question. Um, what do you believe? Uh, what do you believe? Um, have you been here before? Yes, I think so. Absolutely. Well, without question, I feel yes. And this is kind of... I've, I've always known that... I've, or I've always had strong feelings that this isn't all there is and that, you know, our soul has a purpose. Um, and this is, for me, kind of, I guess yet more evidence of that but it certainly raised for me more questions than and, answers, uh, than answers yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you melinda thank you very much that's it for today join us again next time for another chance to explore the possibility that we have all been here before